where today we're going to discuss how you, yes, you can get into the 9.9%. I'll explain what that is. What we're talking about is let's get it in there together. Class, access, and intellectual capital are the new currency. Plus, I'm going to have a little soapbox speech here in just a minute. Once I get it all set up and for my people to come in. First of all, we need to talk about culture and psychology. And if you're new to the channel, my name is Glendon Cameron, the hustling godfather, the founder of Every Man is a Millionaire and a few other YouTube channels. Check it out on the channel page. But what we're going to talk about is the psychology of making money. On my personal Facebook page, I routinely post posts that say that white privilege doesn't exist. And I know they're like, whoa, 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 whoa. And I know some of you will be triggered. But uh, uh, before we get into that, let's just go ahead and explain why I have this mindset. Because I think that I need to put this in the proper context. So give me a second. And I'm going to explain to you some things that I have learned where this will make more sense. So I've recommended this book every year that I've been on this channel and then we're going into nine. The power of your subconscious mind. Now, what does that have to do with white supremacy? Well, what you think about is what you become Earl Nightingale. If you haven't gotten it, get yourself there are Earl Nightingale audios and listen to it about a hundred times. And go ahead and get the power of your subconscious mind and read this book. This will make things crystal clear. If you are a person who thinks there is white supremacy, there will be white supremacy. If you're a person who thinks there is no such thing as white supremacy, there will not be anything as white supremacy because the life that you live is an accumulation of all of your thoughts. Now I'm about to go really rude here. When I was co conducting the Craigslist protocols, I deployed the power of my subconscious mind. I know this is going to be all voodoo-ish and woo-woo and new age, and some of you ain't going to get it. I, I, I understand that. But for those of you who get it, this is for you. When I started to really activate that, first, I read the book and I didn't believe it. I mean, it's just like, it didn't, it was like, really? <clears throat> All I got to do is this, this, and this, and things are going to happen? Well, because I read that book so many times because I had listened to Earl Nightingale, I uh, read The Power of Subconscious Mind about 20 times. It got into my subconscious. And when I started to activate it, I wasn't aware that I activated, if that makes sense. And one of the most powerful things that you can do is to script your life. This is where you write down, and it must be written, how you want your life to go. You write it in the, in the present tense. I remember the first time I just did it for some giggles. And it was some um, cracks. I actually I did it on more things, but for things that would make more sense, I wrote up a description of the type of woman that I wanted to show up for the Craigslist protocols. Hair color, eye color, personality, everything. And I just filed it away. In about two weeks, she just showed up. See, when you activate the power of your subconscious mind, you can now see things that you normally can't see because these things have always been there. It's because you're pre-focused on your dominant narrative and what's your dominant narrative let's say if you wanted the hotel people white supremacy black man can't get ahead if that's your dominant narrative i don't care if jesus christ came down and gave you irrefutable proof that that was not the case because your dominant narrative is going to take over in the case with trump people the trump the code of trump i don't care how many facts you it ain't right it's just no there's only one person telling the truth, and that's Donald. I'm going to ride. I'm going to die with Donald. So these are called dominant narratives. 
And whatever your dominant narrative or your subconscious mind programming is, that's what's going to happen. Nothing else is going to happen. So if you think that the government is secretly um, coming after you, they will be. And here's some that I used to get really, really scared of the police and not because I thought they were going to beat me up. I used to be a speeder. I mean, 95, 120, 130 miles per hour. I used to be a speeder. And I also knew that if I got pulled over, more than likely I was going to get arrested. <laughs> so I had a lot of fear of cops because I was speeding. Then one day I got so busy into the storage auction business that I didn't think about them anymore. That dominant narrative got reprogrammed. And I was speeding. And I just looked and I actually said, he doesn't see me. And I literally went by this cop's car. I know I had to rock it because I was doing about 110. No lights came on. Nothing. So this is why I passionately say the things I say, because if you go ahead and on my Facebook page, I have people who are fighting me right now. What? Supremacy is real. And I'm like, OK. Um, what are your solutions to fix this? Well, I don't have no solutions, man. I just want you to understand and to believe in white supremacy like I do. That's all I want to do. Now, think about that. People want me to believe in it when I don't believe in it. And really, I don't. I mean, and also, there's more things you have to do. Like, statistically, white people are catching L's in virtually every category. They're not reproducing and replacing themselves. The opioid crisis is predominantly white. The suicide rate of middle-aged white men is through the roof. There's a, their women are leaving them. Their women are taking their money and take, beating, the, beating the crap out of them in child support. And I just don't call this white supremacy. <laughs> it's just like, if I look at it from an objective standpoint, there ain't nothing supreme about that. But that's not my dominant narrative. So if that's your dominant narrative, I highly suggest that you start reprogramming it now because your dominant narrative will keep you poor. It will keep you broke. It will keep you in a situation that is not productive for your life. Because I, I, I was sitting there and I was sitting there like they are fighting me on this. I put up a post about Robert F, Robert F, Robert Smith, the billionaire, right? He's the richest black person in the country right now. Someone wanted to be ticky tacky and go like, well, you know, you said he was poor. He had parents who were PhDs. And I was just like, I heard the dude say in the interview that he grew up poor. And, it, you know, and actually, I should have been like, you know what, motherfucker, you wouldn't even heard of him if it wasn't for me. I'm the one that introduced you to this black billionaire because you didn't have the presence of mind to even look for such things because your dominant narrative is white supremacy. So hopefully you guys hear me. Every negative thought that you have impacts your life. So if you feel there is a black person, or an Asian person as a Latino that you cannot win, you won't win. There is this Latino Diaz Food, D-I-A-S, you can look, you can Google it because it's a huge, huge company. He lives off West Paces Ferry. This man is a Hispanic. I tried to sell him some office furniture many years ago. He didn't buy into it. He lives in a $10 million house and runs a multi-million dollar business. Right? Hispanics are killed at a higher rate than black males. See, if you have an objective narrative where you can look and let information in and you don't have called a fixed mindset, you will see many of things. But because people have these dominant narratives that are um, steeped into junk, bad things, crap, they can't see the fact that it's simply not true. Now, one of the things that I want to introduce you, yes, you, 
can get into the 9.9%. Now, what is the 9.9%? That is the buffer zone between the have-nots and the point something percent, because, excuse me, one of the misnomers is that if you're a millionaire, you're in the one point percent. No, no. If you're in the millionaire, you're in less than a percent. The one percent starts at an income of 280K a year. That's one percent of income earners. Now, the 9.9 percent is a group of people who have a net worth of 1.5 million up to 5 million. And then once you have a net worth of 5 million, you're in that zero point something percent. Now, most of these people who are in the one point and the 9.9 percent, half of their wealth is their home. Now, I'm going to say some. Now, open up your minds and don't start shutting me down before I even finish what I'm saying. I have a new home. Mortgages almost four grand a month, which is about $50,000 a year. Now, if you start a business and if you get to $150,000 up to 200 K, you can afford this house. And if you go ahead and get this house and you use the advanced strategy of hustler undergrad, you could probably get this sucker paid off in three to 10 years, keep it and buy another one. So by starting a business, getting a nice house and owning it and getting another, you're in the one point, you're in the 9.9%. That is some, I feel that many of you with the right mindset, you can achieve in your lifetime. Now, why do you want to get into the 9.9%? This is the launch pad for multimillionaires and billionaires. Now, let's go back to Robert Smith. Robert Smith, um, his parents are principals, right? But more importantly than his parents being principals, his parents were married. This is one of the strongest indicators of success. A child coming from a two parent household with married and committed parents. You see it all over the NFL. You see it all over the NBA. Uh, You'll see some single parent children get into the NBA and they are genetic freaks. They have so much talent, so much coordination. But when you look at the Clay Thompson's and the Steph Curry's mother, father, and they're still married. And then you look at Howie Long's son in the NFL, his parents still married. So the greatest thing that Robert Smith's parents gave him was a stable home life. Because you'll have many people who came from a two parent loving household where the parents stayed together and they became amazingly successful. And I'm gonna tell you why. And this is one of the benefits that I had. How many of you moved around a lot as a children? I never moved as a kid. I never moved. The only time I left that house is when I joined the military. It was boring, it was a little crazy, but I never moved. I had stability like a mug. Stability, where things are going to be the same day after day after day after day after day after day. This gives a kid a sense of comfort and stability, which also reaches into faith. If you grow up and you see things are the same all of the time, you'll be bored as a kid. But on that subconscious level, you will have the narrative that Things are doing well. Things are, I'll always be okay. I'll always be safe. I'll always have money because your dominant narrative is imposed upon you by your parents. This is why I think that the single parent household is one of the worst things you can do for your children. And it ain't me hating on single mothers. It's just me speaking from experience. But once again, we have many dominant narratives that are rooted in 
mediocrity, inferior speaking and inferior thinking and low expectations. Over and over, I'm like, seriously, I got people fighting on me because they want to drag me from where I'm at down to where they are. But they don't want to come up to where I'm at because one it's hard. It's going to take some time. It's going to take delayed gratification. It's not easy, but it's worth it. And one of the things that happens is, and you know, I got people of every hue race. I got people in Israel who are in hustle undergrad, but to my black people, you're going to have to liberate yourself from this non progressive ghetto based thinking. Do you know that the children of upper middle class black people often don't do as well as they could because they've embraced hood culture? Hood culture is dangerous. Hood culture is not predictable. It's not productive. But many people in appearance to be down in an appearance to look good to their friends, people they don't really know, people they really don't care, but they represent They do this stuff to their lives, their children, creating this cycle of a permanent underclass. You don't have to be in this permanent underclass. You will have to change your thinking. You have to change your behavior, but you don't have to be in it. This is another reason. So your dominant narrative, because one of the things that I've done for years is I have tracked the number of women who have been shot by the police. You used to be able to find these stories, but when the Australian chick got shot by the black officer, that became a dominant narrative. And every time, I don't care whatever way you arrange the keywords, that story pops up. It is amazing. It is really, really amazing because the powers that be, there's like 35, 40 guys who own all major news outlets. They're shaping the narrative. And they don't want you to see that this white mother shot by the cops like a dog in the street because that will engender sympathy and understanding of white people with the plight of black people. That's why you don't see that. It's not that it doesn't happen. They're shot more than we are. It's just they don't they don't show those stories because they don't want to. Because once again, it's all in the math. There's 230 million white people and there's 40 something, 44, 45 million black people. If you in angered 100 million of those white people, shoot, 50 million, you got a problem if you want to keep society a certain way. And that's why you don't see these stories. But I want you guys to have a good life. I want you guys to get what you want, drive what you want, live where you want. But it's not going to happen until you change your thinking. So going forward, I'm just going to start deleting the Hotep comments because due to their dominant programming, the dominant narrative, they are programmed to attack people who are escaping. I know it's crazy. Years ago, when you remember, for those of you who've been here a while, when I used to do all my videos against this white wall because I didn't want people to know how I was living. It was cool then. Glendon Cameron. He's just a storage auction guy. He buys and flips stuff. He's just a storage auction guy. But when it came out that I was very intelligent, very well off, a lot of stuff started to change. This is when I started to get, quote, the low-key haters on Facebook. It will start off with just a simple comment where they're disagreeing and they'll keep going and keep going and keep going because they're like the agents in the matrix. Anybody can become an agent at some point, like and you're an agent because that dominant narrative is in many, many people. And once they see someone escaping, someone leaving the plantation, boss, that Glenn and Cameron, he bought the, he, he in the middle of the field. Oh, boss. He's at the gate. But he, he walked out the gate, boss. Boss, he got a house across the street from you, boss. But I hate that. I hate him. 
because he's making us look bad. And a good friend of mine said this, that most black people were not trying to end white supremacy. They just wanted a better position in it. I want you to really, really think about that. Remember the slaves who died versus being a slave? That, those are my people. <laughs> those are my people. I'm not going to play that game. I never played that game. It took one overtly racist issue at my last job for me to leave. Just one. And so I'm going to do this on my own. And there are many of you who feel the same way. But you got your family, your wife, your friends all saying, toe the line, Toby. You start a business, it's going to fail. Keep that good government job. Keep those benefits. Don't leave the plantation, Toby, because you're going to be leaving me. And I don't want to be left. I ain't as brave as you, Toby, but I, I will cut you and shake you if you try to run. And this is what we have. Because I got real vicious and it's like, so why do, does your inferior mindset want to bring me down? Why are you arguing me with, with me about this? Because this is how it goes. People argue about it, but they have no solutions on how to exit. None. That's like saying, hey, you got cancer, but we're not going to treat it. If you had cancer, you'd be like, hey, what's the best doctor? What's the best protocols? Really? You'd be trying to treat that. But most folks who talk about white supremacy have no solutions or answers whatsoever because they haven't thought that far. I want you to really think about that. Because they're programmed to keep looping this, to keep talking about this, to raise the level of despair, to raise the level of anxiety, to actually kill hope. I mean, think about it. White supremacy. There ain't nothing you can do. And anytime someone says having money is not going to change your position racially, I like you don't have enough. You just don't have enough because it does changes where you live, changes what you drive, changes what you eat, changes your children's future. To say that money doesn't change anything. And once again, this is the dominant narrative because they don't want you to leave. They don't want you to leave, Toby. They don't want you to go on. They don't want you to be successful. They don't want you to be living in a big house next to the white folk. Because see, you a coon. That's right, you a coon because you've done better than them. Even though you may have a black wife, black children, and you, you got your kids going, to, you a coon because you left them. That's what it's about. And then, you know, because I got a friend who, who's going through this. He owns a construction company. He's black as all day long. His wife is black, his children black, but he's a coon because he moved to a very nice house. The dominant narrative of mediocrity, ghetto mindset, the hood culture is one of the most debilitating mindsets to have. It really is. So that, that's one of the things because all right, so I, I'm off my soapbox now because I'm very passionate about this and I wanted to give you guys an insight into my thinking and what I have learned. You got to be very careful what gets into your subconscious mind. You have to be very careful of the words you use, the language you use. You can't use hood language. You can't be saying white supremacy. It, it, you just can't do that if you want to do better. And I feel that is my fiduciary duty to educate you on what I have learned, which has literally changed my life. I don't get pulled over by the cops. I don't get harassed by the cops. And I'm still a little bit of a speed. I don't speed like I used to, but still a little bit of a speeder. It just doesn't happen. But I have the right mindset. But if you have a mindset full of fear, worry, you get pulled over by that cop, that fear is going to make you act a certain way. And that can actually get you killed. You get pulled over by a cop, you don't have to, yes sir, no sir. You don't really have to just, don't say nothing. Just like, here your license. Oh, I didn't know why you stopped me. 
Oh, okay. And drive on. But people, and once again, this is another product of single parent households. You got grown men that want to get into a verbal altercation with someone who is judge and jury because that's how they saw their mama handle problems. Once again, it's just really, really bad any way you look at it. So part of this whole thing is, and uh, what we're going to do in Hustle Undergrad is we're going to have weekly classes because I'm going to have to do this mindset stuff. And what I'm going to try is I'm going to put information into Hustle Undergrad. And then a few days later, after you take it, then we're going to have a Q&A session. So we're going to make this like a real classroom. It's going to take me a while to get it, but that's what we're going to be working on because there's a better way, people. And this group economics thing, let's talk about group economics. There are black people who are participating in group economics. The well-off black people compete and participate in the well-off people economics. The middle-class people, which are disappearing, uh, participate in middle-class economics and poor people participate in poor people economics. You see the pathology in every class. Um, BGS Igmore did this video about unwed mothers, the white permanent, the white underclass. This isn't a race issue. It's a systematic issue. So therefore, white people, black people, Hispanic people who are in the same social class are going to exhibit and suffer the same ills. I've been seeing this my whole life, but because I have an objective mindset, I can see it. I don't like, you know, there are black people who think all white people are rich. Seriously, there are black people who really think that. There are black people, and once again, we'll get into economic moats because the neighborhood's so expensive, they don't feel like they belong there. If they go there, something bad's gonna happen to them. It's crazy. It is crazy, crazy, crazy. All right, so let me get into this chat room. Because <laughs> I am like, I got to take a new social media policy because I am tired of fighting with people who want me to adopt a loser mindset. It's just the most, it's the craziest thing in the world. All right, so let me get in here. <laughs> What's up, Sense Reality, Chris Love, Excalibur, Chill Zone, Health and Wealth, what's up, Christian, what's going on? Uh, Christian, um, on that question yesterday, now if you have a media company, and, you know, we're going to have to start to expand our conversations and expand our language. If what I think you meant is if you start a YouTube channel, that's a media company. But you didn't say the YouTube part because that's one of the things. Everybody's going to start a, a media company because that's going to be a significant tax strategy. Uh, what's up, Jabras, Zion, Akuna, Be Real, Property Solutions, Yolanda, Victor, Minta Shelley, Be Real. I mean, he, it's a great book, Be Real. What's up, George Sr., Excalibur, Zion, what a man think, so is he. True. Sub Charlatan, Latasha, J. Humps. <laughs> uh, rock and roll, and all you have to do is just uh, go to the video, move that little red tab back, and you can start at the beginning right now. Folks, <laughs> I'm, I'm the person thinking the government watching me. Uh, now, let's be clear there are some people the government really are watching. Good Lord, be real. Mentor Shelley, whatever we focus on expands, focus on solving problems on a large scale to create your own economy. Yes. Law of attraction. What's up? Tiger Shark Studios. Yolanda. Rocking. I used to work. All right. What's up, Robert? G Money keep doing the damn thing. I'm tired of hearing people making excuses for why they can't be successful. The upper class thinks about success. Move forward towards success and not complain about what, why they can't. 
And that, that's really uh, putting in what I'm talking about in a nutshell, because if you dwell on white supremacy, that's going to be your future. That's going to be your present. And that's going to be your past. Jamel, they surely are taking the L Scandinavia's running ad, ad campaigns to encourage people to have kids. I didn't know that, but that's wild. Thank you, Tiger Shark Studios. I've been listening to Glenda for 10 years, been totally correct in his teaching. I think Michael Frank has been triggered. Be real, I was on Eastern Parkway this morning, like 2 a.m. Labor Day parade about to go down. Oh, y'all having this. Health and wealth and real talk. Our mindset is the most powerful thing about us. That is it. Uh, Target Shark also checked Coach Red Pill in the future. They confirm everything Glendon said. There's a lot of people who are on this tip, man. Good deal, Christian. Eighty nine Dr. Funk. I used to watch the news all the time and wonder why I was always scared and depressed. Once I stopped watching the news, my depression went away. The power of the subconscious mind game is real. And that's why they call it programming. If you watch the news, you will think that we are living in hell. The truth of the matter is there's bad things that happen, but it's really a small percentage. These percentage class distinctions can be very misleading. I am in the opinion that the nine by nine is no different than the middle class. Either become a true die hard capitalist or go to the wayside. Uh, no, 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 no. All right. The 9.9% is, let's see, hold on. The 9.9% is an upper middle class. Let's be upper middle class. Once again, I did not say they were rich. Well, actually, I did. I said the new rich. That's the jumping part of this. Um, if you're not in 9.9%, more than likely you're poor or a few paychecks away from being poor. Remember, the 9.9% is the buffer zone. It's the buffer zone between the have nots and the haves in the 9.9% haves. They have nice neighborhoods. They have nicer homes. Their kids go to good schools. Don't get it twisted. It's very real. And the economic impact is even more real. Jay Humps, married parents equals solid foundation. That, that's it. Once again, like the, the, the two school teachers I talked about who were buying all this property, they have two doctors, an attorney, and someone else. All their kids are professionals because they grew up in a stable home life and because their parents were out there working on their economics. Because uh, I remember last time I talked to him many years ago, he said he paid for all his kids' college education. They have no student loan debt. I want you to really think about that. I am in Atlanta. but I, I am in Atlanta, but I'm not of Atlanta. Health, wealth, and real talk. Moved twice as a kid. Al Gordon, military kid, always moved. Rocking the deal. I knew one on the only one home growing up and we owned it. That sense of stability is so important and it's very hard to come by. Yolanda moved twice from England to New York. I didn't know you were from England. What well, top of the morning to you? What's up, Lavanda? Akuna never moved, left home in 18 and moved states twice. Stayed ever since very happy. Be real, I had stability growing up. This is probably why as an adult I don't move around from place to place. It's funny. I have moved, but I have not, I've made, I've not moved out of this neighborhood in 11 years. I've moved around in this neighborhood, but I've not moved out of the neighborhood. So that's really interesting. When, um, what Lacuna said and what Be Real said, BT Creator. I know, Mentor, the news, it's better to read the news than it is to watch the news.
And I know folks who keep it on 24-7, man, they live in fear. I have co-workers saying to me, stay out of Detroit. You, you want to hear something interesting? Detroit has one of the best housing markets, uh, Detroit, Memphis, and Houston. They didn't go down. Well, Detroit, if you had money, Detroit was an oasis. It was a come up. But Memphis never went down and Houston never went down. Christian, I moved so much in my life. It's ridiculous. We traveled because my stepdad was in the military. However, before that, my mom has moved from house to house all the time. Wow. Rock and Dita. All right. One house. 89. <laughs> Dr. Von Hood culture keeps your ass broke. Uh, Jimmy Kelly, you cannot convince people that delayed gratification is worth it unless they want truly, truly want better. I agree. I really do. Rock and roller. You see how Slim Thug attacked Sierra? Well, I, I'm of the same mind as Slim Thug. Um, she did do better. Now, I will like to say, I like how you put that. She leveled up. She seriously came up. Russell Wilson is one of those our kind of people. Look up Lawrence Otis Graham. He's got a book about this. That's Russell Wilson. And, you know, take away the celebrity, take away her, her career, take away him playing football. Normally, those marriages don't work because of different social economic classes. So we'll see. Be real. I used to be into hood culture when I was a child, did childish things. When I became a man, I put away childish things. I like that. Uh, we will. It's coming. All right. Jimmy Kill, of course there are shot more. There's more of them. You wouldn't know it by the narrative that's put out by the hotel community. You wouldn't know that, Jimmy Kell. Christian, uh, trust me, it's an old gym that I used to work at. People would constantly watch the news every day and complain about their lives. It's programming, man. I'm telling you, I've been saying this for many, many years that on this channel that read the news, read blogs. Um, some of these uh, shows here on YouTube are not too bad because uh, you watch the regular news. It can have you ready to cut your throat. I got a question for you women who are going in on Sierra and Slim's up. Now, if Sierra married a bum, what would y'all say? And be honest. If Sierra married like a regular man, she's not even a bum. Let's say she married a UPS driver. What would y'all say? Be honest. Attacking the fleeing is not crazy. It's the woke version of crabs in the barrel. I know, Mentor Shelley, the jealousy is a trip. Rock and Diva, a co-worker lives in the suburbs. Mary owns a house. He lives in a different reality, but has hotels telling him he's oppressed. Or my favorite, fake inclusion. You live in the neighborhood. The neighbors invite you over. They treat you well. They look out for you. They watch your house when you're going, but you ain't included. No, no, that's all just a mirage. Uh, man, Christian used to be a hotep. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> wow, man. I did not know that. Stefan, the system doesn't want you to break free, but once you do, you're really free. Nothing they can do. I can see through the, po the portholes of the ship and just realize I can get out of these shackles. Because the shackles are mental, man. So good for you, because that's where it starts. When I went through my situation where I was in the boarding house, which turned out to be a blessing, is I got reprogrammed. I got totally reprogrammed. Do a good job, salesman of the month, get fired. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That, that's not supposed to happen. Lay it off, fire, the same thing. Be a good husband. I'm not supposed to be living in this boarding house because I looked out for my fam. So... 
I had I, I had this experience, this expression. In their house, I had to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. And for those of you who don't know, Humpty Dumpty, the egg that sat on the wall, he fell off and all the king's men put him back together again. Look it up. It's a nice little story. But I had to put myself back together again. But what I reassembled looked nothing like what was broken. Because of like when I was picking up the pieces, it's like, okay, so this whole notion of doing your best and being your best person, this does not work with certain people. So that's gone. Uh, being a really good man with someone who you haven't vetted, that's gone. So I sorted out a lot of stuff. <laughs> I know a lot of dysfunction, Mr. Shelley. Jimmy Kerr, crazy you mentioned cancer. So many black people I know are content to take pills to rest their life but never solve the root issue. That's my biggest gripe. I mean, like, okay, you want to come to me and say, okay, what is your solution? What is your solution? What are you doing about it? I'm the type of person when I have a problem, I don't complain. I take action and I do something about it. And I've talked about this for years, but for some reason, and I'm going to, I'm going to talk about this a little later as I get through these comments. It, ben Israel, yep, they support white supremacy and all the economic customs and holidays. Can I get a hello? See, that's one of the things. Like I said, most of the folks who go on and off about white supremacy enable it at every twist and turn. So they're not really fighting it. They want me to be more inclusive in it. Stefan, I see you out there hunting your own food. <laughs> Oh, man. Rocking and roll diva. My friends listen to whole tips all day at work and now thinks he's oppressed despite owning a home in a good area, being married for 10 years as a kid. He still thinks the white man. Out. <laughs> I will tell you a crazy story. On one of these labor pool jobs, I, I was encountered this guy named Gregory. He was a whole tip. He was a good dude. And we had they used to have these deep philosophical conversations. So I, I put this to him. So I am supposed to have more love and affection for my brother who is trying to rob me than this white person who is helping me. Yes, because see, they're helping you because it's part of an agenda. And the brother, he's just in his natural. So you got to have pity for him. And I was like, wait a minute. So and I told him the story of while I was walking home, how these guys, these brothers, in this Impala, smoking weed, they he's like, they were, it was probably a gang initiation hit, and he's like, well, they're lost. I said, but see, the thing is, if I stayed in that neighborhood, I would be lost or dead. He had nothing to say about that. Rock and roll diva. I was working at Scottish Rite, and this is really, you, you make a real good point. I used to work with people who were very unhappy and they complained all the time. Now, once again, this was before I was reprogrammed. And I'm like, yeah, man, they're doing this wrong. Yeah, man, they're doing this wrong. So I quit my job. You know, it's like, yeah, I'm going to quit. I was the only fool to quit my job. They didn't quit. It was like, well, you know, I need my, I was like, wait a minute. I thought you said this was so bad. No, I mean, it ain't that bad, but you know, good luck to you. Brave of you to quit your job. Fortunately, I was able to roll off into another full-time job at Northside. And then I went back and then Lil, she used to run a lab and I said, look, I need a little extra money. If you need any help for the weekends, just let me know. She said, I never uh, terminated you out the system. Here's your badge back. You can work this shift, this shift. Because I, did, I was such a good worker that she was like, but I actually quit my job because of this foolishness. And none of them did. But they were the ones that complained the most loudly. I'm ashamed that I allowed that to happen. It was one of the worst moments of my life. I'm sitting there like, I'm the only fool that quit my job. They were just talking. They, they really weren't going to do anything about it. They were just going to continue to complain. Yes, Al Gordon, Christianism, people don't understand the power of poverty. You have people coming around telling you that the white man is keeping you down and you look at your conditions, it's easy to believe in falsehoods. Well, no one wants to say 
And I had this conversation with myself in that bathroom, in that mirror. Like, you fucked up, dude. I had to look at myself and say, I fucked up. Because I did. Uh, bad as my ex-wife was, I had not saved a penny. Everything went toward bills. I was working two, three jobs. Didn't save any money. And that's why I ended up in that boarding house. It was my fault. That aspect. You know, regardless what she did, if I had some money or I had, you know, stronger credit, that never would have happened. But once again, a lot of people don't want to take responsibility where responsibility needs to be taken. Jamal, I know five people seriously overweight and now on CPAC machines with nobody's going to the gym eating better or anything. Yeah, that, that, that's something that gets me because uh, I didn't want to be on the CPAC machine, so I lost weight because uh, I think that's where I was heading. I was having, um, I had solved the regurgitation, I forget what it's called, and I had some other issues, and I was just like, I got to change how I eat. Change how I eat, start working out more, and uh, all that stuff went away. And Kuna, and then they want to, then they want you to get it to. Oh, crabs in the bucket. New girl, new Juru girl. Thanks for the 10 bucks. Rockin' Diva, I smile when I see a cop never been bothered by one. And that's something else, too. Because I'm no longer speeding. When the cop pulls up behind me, I don't even worry about it. I remember I was on Roswell Road and the cop triggered his lights. I didn't even think he was coming for me, and he didn't. He actually pulled over this blonde white chick. Let the blackie, let the darkie go and pulled over the little, maybe he wanted to flirt with her because she was cute. Uh, let's see. <laughs> it just jumped. <laughs> Good Lord. All right, hold on. Okay. Uh, Jay Humps, yeah, it's in the art of holding section. Uh, Deb wish. I don't struggle. I don't. I don't do struggle love. Deb wish for. I became a fan of yours after I heard your story about how you went out and got yours. Our people are lazy. Period. <laughs> this is Deb wish for. Uh, Daniel, I'm not getting any email updates. Uh, go to your spam folder and look for stuff that says, you know, put in the search bar, Glendon at Hustler Undergrad. And if you want to get notifications, you will have to go. I don't think I have that below. Uh, you'll have to go below. Uh, I'll put it on there. The, the link. Actually, I can do it right now while I'm thinking about it. The pride of African kings watching and supporting you from Las Vegas. Thanks. Sassy Moxie, thank you for this conversation. Uh, it needs to be had because they are just, I've never, and I actually asked one and he, we actually start to have a real conversation. It's like, why do you want me to be thinking like you? That's a loser mindset. And we, we you know, we had a, a really decent conversation about it. But there's some people, they don't want to have a conversation. They just want to call you names. That's all they want to do. They just want to call you names. All right. Be real. I'm a coon because I got rid of one BMW and got a new one. I'm a coon because I'm working towards getting that big house. Uh, R Rons, R-A-U-N-S. Thanks for the $10. Keep up the great work. I've never read The Secret, so I can't really say. Rock and Roll Diva, thanks for the ten dollars super chat. Uh, Christian, so what I meant yesterday was I have my YouTube channel, online of products and online training. So I figured since I'm doing a lot of stuff online, it will follow up with a media company. Uh, you will do the holding company, you will do a media company, and you want to have your supplement line in a separate LLC. Go to Christian Guzman. And you'll see a breakdown because he does fitness and how he has all his stuff slotted up. 
because if you do supplements, you have extreme exposure and you don't want all that locked up into one company. All right, give me a second. I will um, go ahead. For those of you who don't want to miss any streams, I don't know what's going on with the emails with YouTube, but um, it is kind of crazy. Live stream notes. Uh, All right. Come on. There we go. All right. So that should be under the video. Uh, Jay Humps gives you affirmations to tell yourself. I really believe in that. One of the first things I do is I wake up, I say, today is going to be a good day. I already start the, the, the process. But the thing is, the affirmation and quotes must be followed up by action. It like intensifies the results like 50 times. Rock and roll Dina. Serena's dad moved the whole family from Compton to Florida to give his girls a better chance at tennis. Because you're from the hood, you don't have to stay there. And you know, rock and roll diva, that man catches so much flack. If it wasn't from him, there would be no Venus and Serena. And I'm not just talking about because he's the daddy. But because of his vision, because of his work, his time working with the girls. But the man gets like no props. None. It's crazy. Apparently you did, Michael, because I saw you getting deleted left and right. Last round, someone used a clip of you in the YouTube video. Migto complimentations, taste of equality. These feel. <laughs> I wonder what that was going to happen. That's funny. Black Zeus ninety two. I like the name Zeus. Thanks for the ten dollars. Send an email about. Oh, um, I sent everyone a email about that. Check your. <laughs> Check your spam folder and email me from your real um, email address to glendon at hundergrad.com and I'll resend you the link. Uh, ben, they're not encouraging Latinos or Asians to have kids. It's only their base. And essentially, you know, going back to the system, all humans, whether you are black, white, whatever, from a psychological and a physiological standpoint, we're like 95% the same. And an emotional standpoint, we're 100% the same. So induced into certain narratives, certain environments, we're gonna have the same responses. And I've been saying this for years. All poor people are treated like crap by the cops. Poor white people, poor black people, poor Hispanic people, poor Asian people. Go out to California and see how they're handling these Asian gangs. But you don't, once again, you, you have to search out for this stuff because the mainstream media is not going to serve you those stories. And, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy because I think one of the reasons that they don't put out the number of Hispanic males that are shot by police is they don't want black people and Hispanics to align. So they keep that separate. Martin, these host ups perpetuate their own condition with their non abundance mindsets. I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah, because health, wealth, and real talk, once you start to focus on yourself, your environment, your ec economics, you have to ask yourself should I be doing this, watching this that makes me no money, that doesn't fulfill me, or should I be over here? Because when I get real busy, I stop watching everything and it's just a, it's just a natural response because you know talking to you guys doing the things to do is way more important than watching that stuff and yesterday I just got into conversations because I had the time but you know I'm just not going to even participate in any more of these conversations because you know it's fun to do every now and then but if I was to do it every day I'd lose my mind because 
the, the, the poverty mindsets, the scarcity mindsets are everywhere. And if they see that you're got, you know, you're trying to do better, you'll be attacked. Remember when Steph Curry's wife just said, you know, dress like a lady and she got attacked. She did not shame anyone. She didn't mention any names. It's funny. Thank you, rock and rolling, rock and rolling diva. Deb wish for my family looked like the black Brady bunch. When my parents divorced, that's when it became hard. And that's typically what's going to happen. Single motherhood is one of the fastest ways to poverty. This is statistical fact. You can look it up. But for some reason, people keep embracing it. Okay, code for the extraordinary mind. I like that stuff on this one thing to listen to the hustler's mind says entirely different thing to take notes on it. Whoa, there's a lot of stuff in there. I mean, it's my life. Many of you want to be better off. And many of you are uncertain or a little confused on how to do it. Now, I came out of a very weird situation. My mother was not married, but my grandmother was in the home. So in a really odd way, I had a two parent household until age 11. I had the stability. I learned my grandmother taught me how to read. So a lot of stuff that middle class and little rich kids were getting, I was getting in our dining room. We had all these bookcases that were full of psychopedias. My grandmother was a teacher graduated from Miles College. So I had a seriously foundation, strong foundational upbringing that I really didn't begin to appreciate until I became older and saw how this impact, because this stuff shows up when you become an adult. All of this um, nurturing, all of this taking care of this training, this is stuff that shows up when you're 25, 35, 45, 50. And if you didn't get it, you got people out here who can't take care of themselves. They've never learned how to take care of themselves. And they're 40 some years old. Randall Riley, stability is important. It's the first thing we consider when it comes to our children. Dang, man, one cigarette from being needy. <laughs> What's up, regular web guy? I know you got to You just got to get out of that stuff. Acuna Robert Burns. Thanks for the $10. I fucks with you. Your info has been teaching me for years. I stack many people struggling would not be struggling if they would invest in themselves. I agree wholeheartedly because when I got Earl Nightingale lead the field, I was making 200 bucks a week and it cost me 114. So I paid. Wow. Like 20% of my monthly take home pay for some tapes. One of the best investments I ever made. Uh, since real, I can see your point, but that buffer zone is ever shrinking. Those teachers who could live on one income under 30 and invest the other with the spouses highly. Uh, I would vigorously disagree with you. And I'm going to actually give it to you in, in math. Once again, we, we're about abundance mindsets here, right? All right. So let's take average income is 32K to 45K. Now, on this, you cannot live in a major city. But you can about 75% of America. So let's go with the first thing. And this is going to come under choices. You making 32K, 45K, 
you can't live in the city. You just can't. It's too much money. So the first thing is people must make proper financial choices based on the money they have coming in. So let's say you and your girl made $30,000 a year each. You know where you need to move? You need to move your ass to Villa Rica where you can buy a house for about 60 to 120. Then you need to buy that house, then buy two or three more houses in Villa Rica. Say it takes you five years. Then at this point, you got enough disposable income to move to the city if you so desire. Once again, anything you throw at me, I'm going to be able to de deconstruct it because I grew up poor. <laughs> I didn't have it like this my whole life. I grew up poor. I had to figure out this stuff. I was going to pick up my check and my car ran out of gas with my daughter in the back seat. I grew up poor. So these theories and suggestions and trainings are not something that comes out of some uh, my think tank. These are applicable and real things that you can use. So the first thing is, if you make that little money, you don't need to live in the city. So you're out there in Villa Rica. Use that 32 to live on. And use that other 32 to invest. Now, I'm about to show you something else. Hold on a second. Just to prove. Because I know, I know y'all like third-party proof. Uh, Mike. And Lauren. Retired. All right. So. Go out here and check this video out. Retired at 30 on $56,000 a year, 12 years of income net worth recapped. During the recap, he and his wife, uh, many years, only made fifty dollars to $60,000. Well, wait a minute. That's 30, and they, they, but they moved. So go ahead. A couple check of weeks ago, out. we made our announcement video, our financial... Now, what they did is they saved up 200 grand, making 60K, bought a warehouse, rented out, and the rent is funding their retirement. So once again, it's about choice and it's about options. Like, no, you can't live in Atlanta. No, you can't live in my neighborhood making that kind of money. Nope, you can't. But you can live in 75% of America. Stefan, when y'all say leveled up, I got the visual Mario touching the flower. <laughs> touching the flower. That's funny. Latasha, if the UPS driver treats her better than she leveled up. Mama needs her wine. If she married a UPS driver, I'd say she could have did better. Just saying. Thank you for telling the truth. Thank you, Mama Needs Her Wine, because if Sierra had married a UPS driver, y'all would have lost your minds on her. Thank you, Mama Needs Her Wine. I appreciate you telling that truth that a lot of women won't tell. Been the bartender. Shit, you're a homeowner in the neighborhood. You're included as fuck. I know, man. JC Sanchez, what's your thoughts about investing in startup companies? If you running it, do it. If you just going to drop some money in it, you ain't going to make a lot of money. I'm just saying. Immaculate works. Sarah building a, a poor man up would be honorable. We need their talents, but she'll never do it. I appreciate you, Stefan. Because the thing is, the more you listen to, because this is what happens when you're listening to these books and stuff. You'll listen to one passage and then your mind will stick on that passage for 30 to 40 seconds. So anything that's in those 30 to 40 seconds, you actually miss. Your mind does not receive that information. That's why you have to listen to it over and over again. Because Earl Nightingale taught me this, and it's true. I listened to Earl Nightingale about 40 times, and each time I listened to it, I pulled something new out of it.
That's cool, Richard, Christian. And also, you get access to that. I mean, because sometimes the conversation these people just have can educate you and help you out. Stefan, that's why I pay high rent to stay out the hood and leave an environment that will have me sick and trapped. It's like you leaving the hospital was symbolic in that way. Klein in, I tried to help this older dude from the hood get him a job at my workplace, told him to call me the next day so I could talk to my manager, never did, even though he asked me to help him get a job. That's just crazy, Klein in. That is. All right, it just jumped for some reason. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Because, <laughs> all right. Sassy Moxie, most black women don't care about the UPS FedEx dude because he has a stable job and you live comfortably, but you would have to work also to keep their life up. More truth. New Jeru girl, introspection is a must if you want to grow, looking at yourself before blaming others. Absolutely. Sassy Moss, I can tell you the hate you get when you are married and are a stay-at-home mother. The hate is real. There's something about being a woman that is not defined by her job. Let me tell you what's going on with that Sassy Moxie. They want to be you. They want to be in your shoes. And I will say that if a woman and man come up with a serious contract where that works, it's probably one of the best things for the kids. But a lot of people, like I said in my video, a lot of women just want to be married and have a wedding. They don't want to be a wife. As you can attest, being a wife is a lot of work. It's a lot of work, but a lot of women don't want that. Sassy Moxie, when marriage ended, you would not believe the backhanded joy they had. Oh, I would, because now you have joined them. Welcome home, sis. Woo, you divorced. I'm so sorry. Hey, let's go out to Ladies Night Wednesday. I'll hook you up with Jeffro. You know, he got one eye, but he's got a big dick. He can put it down. No, he don't have no job. I mean, but he's just good for, you know, that dick thing. That's it. <laughs> Stefan, was that the same blonde trick that tried to get out of the DUI based on the whiteness? Nope, this was another one. Jay Humps, you're not getting the emails to what? To the streams or the course? If it's the course, send me something at Glendon at H undergrad. Wave catcher. That may be true in some cases, but racism does so exist. So let's not act if racism doesn't exist. Maybe you ex haven't experienced it, but many other blacks have. So speak for yourself. Wave catcher. <sighs> this is for you. 2000, I walked into a conference room where Jim Scott was saying, Jim, I forget his last name, was an owner. And they just looked at me and they all turned pink because they were being racist. So you know what I did, wave catcher? I didn't sit there and take it. I got the fuck on. My biggest problem, and I've never said racism doesn't exist, so I'm going to put words in my mouth. I said that you were a bitch if you're going to scream about racism and not do anything about it. So if you're going to try to correct me, say what I said. See, this is the attitude that I'm talking about. Racism exists. White privilege. Where's your, where's your solution, wave catcher? Come up with me with some solutions. Because um, you have a loser mindset. You have low expectations for yourself. And I, I hope to God you don't have children. Yeah, I said that. <laughs> uh, electric, electric mine, are you sending emails to the art of holding companies? Actually, I did not, but I'll fix that today. Uh, why do they like calling each other coons? That's the worst, eating your own. Well, no, here's the thing. Coon is this thing that many black people is a very bad black person. 
That's kind of it. They're just going to call you a name. I don't get it, but it's stupid to me. Sassy Marketing's legacy is not part of the black lexicon that takes work. Marriage and dedication to each other is serious. Cas Casper Devon, shout out to my out, shout out to that dad. I love your I'm like, seriously, this gets me pissed off. I've never seen so many people rushing to the bottom willingly without anyone pushing them. It's like, here's the bottom. Let me jump in there. I know playing a stationary and desk it, it, it's a trip. Jimmy, go check out the blog, jackass stats and tracking the all crime from my hometown of Chicago. It's a real eye opener. I already know what's in it. I guess the sloth saved their energy to attack those who try to encourage them to do something. Just a thought. It does seem to be that way, Stefan. Drea, oh, this life is yours, not someone else's. Absolutely. Frozen creative, her hustler's mind says, dope took notes. What you said about success, being a jealous bitch was amazing. It, I mean, most people are poor, either mentally or financially, and in the worst case, both. And these people will become vicious on you if you try to lead them somewhere else or you don't agree with their dominant narrative. They will literally try to hurt you. Uh-oh, Stephen, it takes better to live better. It takes thinking better to do better. It takes controlling the narrative and frame of your life to think better. You, your book taught me that. Appreciate you, dude. <laughs> Jack, what are your thoughts on the FDA interest free housing loans? Uh, can we say, oh shit, we're in the recession again. Thanks for the dollar ninety nine. Your brand. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, so I'm, I'm going to go. I'm finished with my rant. Uh, for those of you who are still here and who want to do better, you can go below and you can enroll in Hustle Undergrad. It is, let me make sure I say it right. It's uh, 300 bucks per month times 30 months. Probably stay there for a while, so. Thank you for uh, indulging me on this holiday week, holiday, whatever it is. I got to run. So like, comment, subscribe. Let me know your thoughts of this. And uh, I know the whole tips are coming for me. It's OK. I'm used to it because anyone that doesn't agree with that loser ass, pathetic, bitch ass pathology is a coon. I get it. I totally get it. So with that, I'll see you folks later. Have a good one.